Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to discuss my website, uh, www.capriniriscore.org, uh, especially because we've made some updates. And I'd also like to take you through it and show you the various features that I think uh, are very helpful. And one of those is that we have definitions for all of the risk factors. And uh, I would encourage anyone in the audience, if you see anything you don't like, and this has happened to me before, is write to me because um, one of the reasons that the Caprini score is successful is because of all of the people from around the world that I've solicited to help me with it, tell me where it's good, tell me what mistakes we've made, where we have to improve and so forth. And that can all be done through asking the doctor a question. Before we even get to that, we keep no information on this website. Everything is, is, is erased. There's no secret IP addresses or anything like that. And also I have, I personally fund this out of my own pocket because I don't want any outside influences from uh, companies and so on and so forth. So it's, it's all, and it's all free. It's all for the betterment of the public. So that having been said, you can come and ask me a question and uh, I'll be happy to uh, talk about things, but Due to legal consideration, questions regarding your personal care or condition cannot be addressed. These matters need to be discussed with your personal physician. You can ask me a question about any of these things, deep vein thrombosis, so on and so forth. I'll be happy to answer your questions. But uh, uh, again, we don't provide medical advice. That's up to your doctor because I don't know your condition. I haven't done a physical exam and so forth. If you're a lay person, the, the, the uh, patient-friendly risk assessment is a good one to take. If there's anybody out there, I know on my website, there are, there are also administrators that watch this. And I would point out that this patient-friendly risk assessment is a great thing to put on your EMR portal. And if you just write to me, I'll, I'll let you all do that for free. I don't, I'm not, I don't charge for anything, but that way when a patient is going to go in for an exam, before they come in for the exam, if, they, if you so choose, they can all put this information in uh, into their uh, portal. Uh, the, the EMR portal of their own record. Anyway, that having been said, uh, at the top is a running score. And uh, you put in, let's put in age 75. Let's put in you had a heart attack. And you see, as you put these in, these uh, th things change. Let's put in female here for a very, this is very important because uh, if, if this covers uh, if you're using birth control pills, implantable devices, hormonal patches, IUD, so on and so forth, uh, and uh, or you're pregnant or had a baby within the last month, or this category, and I would remind you that this is the only risk assessment in existence that talks about obstetrical complications, unexplained stillborn, spontaneous abortions, premature birth with preeclampsia, or a low birth weight at uh, a low birth weight. Uh, in a pay, in a in, in a in a newborn, and uh, the reason why this is so important is that those clinical situations are associated sometimes with the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, which is three possible markers of blood clotting. And what's fascinating about this is sometimes these don't go away right away. Uh, and if you're 50, 60, or 70 years old, you may be carrying a genetic defect that predisposes you to a blood clot. And if you don't know that, that may jeopardize the outcome of your hospitalization or operation. Very important. In the doctor version of this, in the medical version for healthcare professionals, we will list all of the references and so forth to back up these statements. Uh, and then let's say if you've had cancer, we'll put that in and see that's two points. So it goes up to six. If you have a blood clot or a family history of blood clot, let's put a family history of three points. I would also remind you that this is only one of two risk assessments in the world that talks about family history of thrombosis. Most risk assessments talk about uh, thrombophilia markers, which are an abnormal blood test indicating a risk of blood clotting. But uh, many people have blood clots that don't have a positive marker. So the important question is about family history of thrombosis. Okay. Now you have to put in your your uh, uh, weight. We'll put in a weight and your height. We'll put in a height, and that'll give you a, a BMI. 
automatically. Now let's say that, and, and here for, for this particular one, we have definitions because the BMI of over 25 is important because of two studies, one in joint replacement patients. And if you bring that up, see, this isn't a free article, so we can only give you the abstract. And then the other one is uh, with birth control pills. Birth control pills and BMI of over 25 are synergistic to create a uh, higher incidence of blood clots. So anyway, that's the story with that. And then here are additional risk factors. And this is new on this website. And I had left this out, even though the studies were published and somebody kindly wrote to me and said, Dr. Caprini, where are the additional risk factors? Here they are. And the, so if your BMI is over 40, then that increases another one and so forth. So we'll put a couple in here. And then the definitions, there are two articles. And they both happen to be free articles, so you can download them, which explain how this, these new risk factors were validated. This, this is uh, one by Eugene Krauss, a professor of orthopedic surgery. And this is the other one also by the Krauss uh, team. Marianne Cronin was a pharmacist who uh, was the lead author on this one. Again, it's a free article, so it can be downloaded. Okay. Now we go to the summary. And when you go to the summary, you will see that the score of this patient was 12. So that's very high. And usually they talk about you may need blood thinners, blah, blah, blah. Final decisions need to be made by your physician. So ideally what you would do is print this and take it to your physician. And again, we keep nothing. Now, the only difference here is that there is one button called the V registry. If you want to enroll your data in the VWIN registry, then you can do it, but it's all protected. Uh, it's a protected website worldwide, and you'd have to uh, you'd have to get a you'd have to log in, you'd have to join, and so forth. But uh, uh, that's beyond my uh, uh, registry. So we go back here, and uh, then these lists the factors that you picked, and again, as I say, you can print that out or you can just disregard it. We go back to home, you'll come to the risk assessment for healthcare providers. And if we take a look at this, it's a little more comprehensive with definitions for each of these risk factors. And for example, elective hip replacement, that's a five. You see that's five right up there. And here's the definition of major lower extremity arthroplasty. There's hover words, there's the article, uh, that's again, that happens to be the Krauss article and the hip fracture. Here again is another article, this, this article. This is a beautiful article from Thailand. Very, very nice study. It shows the value of preoperative screening when Caprini scores are very high and so forth. And you can get rid of the definitions there. And then another thing here, as we go down, you can put other risk, if you put other risk factors in, we'll use swollen legs and serious pneumonia. What I want to do is get to the, here is age. And then if we put in female now, we'll get individual boxes on birth control pills or hormonal replacement. And that'll show you those definitions. It'll tell you why we've picked that. And as I say, if you disagree with any of this, if you come up with better articles, write to me pregnancy. And then uh, this is really important, this uh, unexplained stillborn infant. And let's say you will s say yes to that. That adds a point. But here's the definitions. This is the only risk assessment. And, and folks, as you know, this is 2025. Why is this the only risk assessment in the world that talks about women's problems? So first of all, the reason that I'm telling you this is not to say that I'm so smart. There was a, a lady that was a medical, uh, was, a, was a resident in maternal fetal medicine, Holly Cassells, MD. And now she's a, a, a famous maternal fetal medicine specialist. But when I was putting together the risk assessment, she came to me and said, Joe, you better put these in. These are really important. And the reason they're important is that although these women may have this history, if they they may carry one of these genes, but 20, 30 years later, some of them still carry the gene. Sometimes they go away, sometimes they don't go away. And this is the article that shows that. Uh, this is one of the references which shows about antiphospholipid antibodies. And that means if you're 60 or 70 years old and you have an operative procedure and you had that history when you were having your obstetrical career many years earlier, you may be carrying a gene that makes you at higher risk for thrombosis. Failure to pick that up may jeopardize you and subject you to a serious or fatal blood clot. So that's why it's so important. All right, now let's go to the end here. 
And the other one, we talked about personal family history of thrombosis. And that's, we'll put that here. The additional risk factors. And in this, this, this is a more comprehensive look. So not only do you have the two articles here that were used to validate these additional risk factors, but also a separate tab that will take you to the definitions and the, the articles for each of the risk assessment factors that are mentioned. So that it's the more comprehensive look. Okay, so then you will come to the summary. And uh, so, and when it happens like this, there was a problem with your submission. So I forgot to fill something out. Let's see what that is. I didn't, I missed the, I, I missed the weight. You've got to put, you put in the weight here. So that's when you, I'm glad that happened because you'll see that's when you get to that and say, oh man, what, what happened? What, why isn't this working? Well, that's why. Okay, that's a required field, the BMI. Now it'll show you what you picked. And also, since this is the healthcare professionals, there's a scale here, and this comes out of chest and so forth. And um, the uh, the references to substantiate all of these claims are uh, listed below here, one, two, or three. And um, I would point out to you that Cassidy and Rosencrantz and McEnany, they've published 14 articles at least in the last 10 years uh, about the risk score and it's a they're very important references again you can download it print it start again or if you're so inclined we talked about you could go to the put your data in the vwin registry if you choose to do that otherwise it's all erased when you go it off but here's the concept and this is why i i'm trying to promote this and you know it's all free uh, my goal is to improve healthcare around the world. But if you take this risk assessment and you take it to your doctor and, you, and your doctor validates it and so forth, then when you get sick or need an operation or you're in an accident or get a serious infection and have to be hospitalized, that data is already sitting there. We already know pretty much whether or not you're at risk for blood clots. And um, uh, then you might get a much more uh, important uh, evaluation of your overall thrombosis risk, because in emergency situations, sometimes you can't ask about all of these other things. Okay, back to home. Now, the Caprini Resource Center. First of all, the research project. This research project is only for selected, the, these universities have separate IRBs and separate secure databases, and there's a way to to access them. For example, the University of South Carolina, uh, you'd have to put in a special password and so forth. So this is not open to the general public. So you need just, but I just wanted to show you that. What you really need to take a look at is the resource center, because this is really important. One of the most important things about the resource center is the videos. I put a new YouTube video out every month and they're all here and you can access them directly. All you have to do is click on them. Uh, and then- Greetings, everyone. It's indeed a great honor and a pleasure to come to you today with, again, what I think is a very, very powerful presentation that reflects a lineage. And you will- So, uh, one of the things I try to do with this website is to invite visiting professors, and that was uh, Fader Lurie, and also this is dedicated to the great, the one and only, Hugo Parsh. So uh, whatever your interests are, you'll see a whole range of things here. You can even see I've got a couple videos of me riding my trike. Now, patient stories. And I would also encourage the public, if any of you have a story that you're willing to share with me, then you should go, go and ask me a question and we'll get together. And uh, I'm very interested in putting people's stories uh, on the website. I was on a, uh, a symposium uh, with this lady and uh, she, uh, uh, Vonda Vaden Bates, she presented this story at the symposium. And so I was presenting. And so I asked her, so she's kind enough to put on my say. Very powerful and heart moving story. And of course, Marcus well uh, Engel is a famous young man who had a tragic incident that left him blind. And instead of being hostile and mad at the whole world, he turned that into a positive. And he comes around and talks to healthcare providers about how they can be positive. It's a wonderful thing, and there's a number of, of uh, things related to him. And then finally, and this is really important, because this is a young lady that had a blood clot, 
and died after a simple procedure, but nobody asked her about her family history and she had a heavy history of thrombosis in the family with more than one member. So I'm gonna show you this video, it's very short. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that I love you and I miss you today. A daughter is a mother's best friend. Our daughter, Emily, was a UNF graduate and a rising star in healthcare. She was treated for a fractured ankle at Mayo Clinic. She died from a pulmonary embolism stemming from that fracture. Find out the answer to this simple question. What is my Caprini risk? This simple question could save your life. So very powerful story, as you might imagine, tragic situation. Greetings, everyone. And... Uh, it's indeed a great honor and a pleasure well, to come to you today. You, we'll, we'll go back to that. Okay, so let's go back to resources. We talked about the video library, the patient stories. Now let's go to validation studies. And thank, uh, what I'd like to do, here, here's, some of the, here's a few studies here which you can go to, but I'd like to stop and take off my hat. I don't have a hat. I don't have hair either. But and, and thank all the people from around the world who've worked so hard to improve this website and, and to, to improve the Caprini score and make it better. And you'll see what I mean here, because if you click on more articles, there's 452 publications from all five continents, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And sometimes authors point out things that I better take account of, uh, pay, places where the Caprini score needs to be improved. It's all here. If the articles are free, you get the whole article. Otherwise, you get the uh, the reference and the PMID number, and you can display this in a variety of ways. You can look most recent publication date, first author, and so forth. Uh, this is a very, very important part. And again, I'm grateful to all the people from around the world. Now, info about venous disease. Thank you. And we'll, this was a frequent complication of COVID-19, fascinating story about the interrelationship between immunology, clotting, and uh, an antigen antibody reactions, inflammatory reactions, and uh, COVID. And then various definitions here you can see. Links, when you go to this, go to this uh, tab, you'll be able to connect to various websites, including the American College of Surgeons, the American Society of Hematology, and so on and so forth. Then, uh, of course, the Ask the Doctor question, and the final thing here is that besides contacting, if you if you contact me again, I will not give you uh, I will not give you advice about your own case because I I don't have a history, I don't have a physical exam, I don't know anything about you. I will answer questions, however, about these things and then refer you to your doctor. That's important. This tells me. This tells you about me, uh, a little capsule of the, uh, the the website. And then I do have a podcast with Marcus. Everyone who's a healthcare provider needs to really listen to this uh, about Marcus because we all get situations in our practice where we need to use the philosophy that Marcus espouses. So anyway, that's about it for this whole website. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for uh, listening to this, and uh, I encourage you to reach out to me again with the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful and safe day. Thank you very much.